the next super flu could come from anywhere. But many experts believe it's likely to start here, in China's Guangdong province. This region has bred new influenza strains for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years. Dr. Kennedy Shortridge, an Australian virologist, argues that most or perhaps even all strains of flu started here. When the duck was domesticated in southern China about four and a half thousand years ago, all it did was bring the viruses of nature into the farmyard. And it's there that the problems have started for man, I believe. Flu viruses usually begin in waterfowl. But when people, birds and livestock mingle together, viruses can cross from one species to another. And in the last hundred years, the number of people, birds and livestock has exploded. Enormous poultry factories have popped up all over Southeast Asia. Some hold tens of thousands of chickens in one place. The more we share space, the more we share disease. A doomsday situation would be where we have a virus which will kill all our poultry and possibly kill the humans as well. So I don't see the situation getting any easier as the population increases and we get more and more of the of bird farms and so on. I think the possibilities are increasing of this chance happening, this chance emergence, this chance spread of a new pandemic virus. There are human flus and bird flus. Owing to genetic differences, flu strains rarely jump directly from one species to another. Sometimes they need a carrier to bridge the gap. And nature has provided one, the pig. Pigs can carry both types of flu. Suppose that contaminated chicken droppings infected a pig. And let's say that pig has already caught another strain of flu from a farmer. Inside its body, the two forms of the virus could merge, mutating into a deadly new hybrid. In pigs and in humans, mucus forms the first line of defense against infection. It traps most of the flu virus that enters your body. Let's shrink down past the limits of microscopes. Here, a single cell looms as large as a skyscraper. A hybrid virus floats in a mucus sea, one of the millions in this pig's body, ready to infect and destroy. When this new strain of flu jumps back to humans, the next pandemic begins. One day later, the pig is sold, slaughtered, and delivered to a Hong Kong meat market. As the butcher chops, the virus lurking in the animal's blood and tissue splatters through the air. Are these men the super flu's first victims? We may never know. Pandemics are rarely traced back to the first animal-to-human transmission. But thanks to hospital records and airline receipts, we can usually identify patient zero, the person who spreads the disease from city to city and country to country. Right now, she's young and healthy. But this butcher nurses a fresh infection of the superflu. sneeze contains over 100,000 viral particles and it only takes a tiny amount to start an infection. A droplet slides into patient Zero's mouth. The superflu finds a foothold in her body.
Now the battle for survival begins, for her and for the human race.